Hi everybody, thanks so much for stopping by. Today I thought I'd like to do a short tutorial and this one will be about the water system. I'm going to assume that you're new to the world of motorhomes, camper vans, caravans, whatever. It, most of the vehicles use a very similar system and so this would apply for most people regardless of what vehicle you're in. This happens to be my Wild Axe Aurora, which is a six metre van. And it works on a pressurised system. What you have is, you have a water tank underneath the van on this occasion. That's where you hold the tip water. You have a water pump that sucks that up and distributes it wherever it has to go. And so some will be sent to your heater unit to provide the hot water for you and others will just go straight out as cold water and that will be obviously cold water in the taps possibly providing the water for the loo which is what it does on this one and any other outlets that you may have and it works on a pressurized system so what that means is that the water is just sucked up by the pump and then it's pushed out to the taps and if they're open obviously the water flows but if they're not then the pump builds up a bit of pressure into the system and it's as that pressure builds up that's what tells the pump to turn itself off and you will hear it go you'll hear it starting to struggle a little bit and then it just goes clunk and turns off and that, in a nutshell, is what's going on. So what we'll do now is we'll just swap over the cameras and I'll um, give a more visual demonstration of the thing in progress. This system is drained down at the moment, so hopefully we can get it up and running. OK, I shall be back in a moment with another camera. And what I thought it might be useful to do is to just let you hear the three sounds that a water pump typically makes. And they are running empty, pumping and pressurising the system and turning off. So here we go. First off, let's have running empty. pretty classic sound of a pump running empty and that's the one that you don't want to have at any time because that pump will just keep going like that forever more until you turn it off or give it a drink. That is the pump in full flow and when we turn the water off which I'll do now it building up pressure in the system until it clicks off. Well, here we are back on the other camera and just to orientate ourselves what we've got is under that seat there that's where the boiler unit is and if we just lift this flap this gives us access to the two vital things. Number one is this drain down valve here the yellow lever up is to drain down is to close and as a point of interest this lump here is the water pump that's what you're going to hear tapping away and as you can see there are various pipes connected to it so we've got the vital thing done we've sealed the system we now need to turn some water on and just remember that you're not going to get magic instant water flowing around the reason being is that this heater unit has a 10 litre tank on and so the first thing you've got to do is to fill that up so over onto the control board always make sure that you've got plenty of water in the tank otherwise you'll just be sucking up fresh air. Water pump which is turned on there. Uh, 
and the pump is now pumping away. And that's the sound that you want to hear. And at this point, it's not a bad idea just to come across to the kitchen unit, open up the valve, and see what happens. So far we don't seem to have found any air, which is a good thing. Across to hot. Nothing coming there yet. That is because it is still filling up the hot water tank on the boiler. Well, this is very much what you expect to hear, so this is good. Getting air out of a plumbed system is a lot of science and a bit of an art as well. There's extraordinary ways in which the laws of physics can be defied and air stays in places that it should never stay. And so never be surprised with anything that happens in this business. I'm just going to move that around again. You can see she's now stopped working on cold as well. Now back she comes. Let's turn that off for a moment. We'll go across to hot again. Still plenty of air there. Now I can hear the pump tone changing just a little bit. And there we are. Across to cold. Everything's looking good. So if we turn off there for a moment. And the pump is turned off. But we're not finished yet. We've got to go to the other water outlets. One being the hand basin. See what we've got there. Cold, cross to hot. That looks pretty good. Do the same with the shower head. Currently it's down on the floor there, so whilst we do this, we don't spray everything everywhere. Just clunk on. That's good. And the final one on this fan is just the loo. That sounds pretty good. And so there we are. We have a system up and running. So just a couple of things to keep in mind. That now that the system is primed and everything's working properly, in theory, it will continue to stay like that and wouldn't do anything differently unless you ran out of water. That's the theory. The practice is a little bit different. As I said, air can get trapped or appear anywhere at any time, particularly in these rather simple systems. And so it is entirely possible that you will find yourself on occasions where the pump is reluctant to turn off and so you've probably got some air in the system, so don't be afraid just to turn the taps on and off and see if you can get it out. 
And the other strongly recommended tip is whenever you're traveling or leaving the van, turn off the water at the control board. Because at any time that pump might decide that it wants to start pumping and that's because some air has appeared and if you get air in around the pump itself and it can't clear it that pump will just keep thrashing around in the air until such time as you come back and turn it off. Now if that happens while you're driving you won't hear it quietly wearing away and if you're on a three hour run it will just pump away for three hours doing itself harm and could indeed possibly burn itself out. And you will find that the manufacturers are well attuned to that and it won't be covered under a warranty. So yeah, strong recommendation. Try to remember to turn it off. Well, that's that. How to set up a water pump system. I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope it's been helpful. If you have do please make some nice comments, they're always appreciated. Or similarly, do hit the subscribe button and we can hopefully grow this channel a little bit and keep things rolling along. So thanks so much for watching and we'll be back soon. Bye now.